Okay guys, um, this is not really a playing video, but I'm just going to be talking about this great instrument here. And uh, it's kind of finally finished. I've been sort of, um, it's been in various states of disrepair over the years, but finally it's actually complete and this is the way it sh shall stay. So I just want to sort of share this beautiful guitar with you and tell you why I built it. Um, the main reason I built it was because I saw this great guitar player, um, I, his name, um, I can't remember his name, but he was an Italian guitarist who played on the um, the Spaghetti Western. And when I say Spaghetti Westerns, they were sort of um, Western films starring Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood and those kind of great sort of cowboy films in the um, 60s. And they were all filmed in... Um, in Italy rather than um, America because I think they were cheaper over there and they had a, an Italian director and um, the Italians also scored it as well you know I mean who better than the Italians to do that kind of music so um, they had young very young session guitar players you know these guys were like you know 20 21 years old and um, that you know they came up with all those great sort of um, really sort of spaghetti western style of guitar playing and so one of those guys he was sort of playing in the later part of his career um, a Telecaster with these two Dynasonics and that kind of gave me the idea I know Bill Frizzell um, also um, was doing that as well but but it was this spaghetti western guitarist and his name I just can't remember but anyway he's um incredible guitar player and you know he was kind of in the Hank Marvin you know, all those Italian guys were really into Hank Marvin because this is sort of pre Eric Clapton. This is the you know the early sixties, so it was before you know the Blues Breakers and Les Pauls and Marshalls. So they were all sort of Hank Marvin fans. You know, everyone was trying to sort of play like that. And that's so if you think about it, that's you know when you're watching a Clint Eastwood film, all the guitar playing is influenced by Hank Marvin. So just have that thought when you're watching it next. But so that's kind of what where what I why I built that guitar and I guess it's kind of like it's like a Gretsch or a Guild guitar um, with the Bixby but in the format of a telly which I just love tellies because they're so practical because you know say for example if I'm going to Cuba and recording over there then I can have this kind of really cool twanging sounding guitar but in a in a in a suitcase because potentially I can take the neck off this you know um, and uh, which I have done many times put it in a suitcase <laughs> so when I buy a suitcase, I make sure that the suitcase is the kind of that I can fit the neck in the suitcase, you know, otherwise it's too small. And um, yeah, so this is this has been a part many, many times if I tour in Europe, go to Malta, whatever, and Cuba, I just take it apart. <laughs> and this is kind of also built because I, I was playing African blues, what I call African blues for many years. And then I've recently um, started getting into Cuban music as well. So that kind of had an influence as well, where I wanted something, um, the guitar player I'm, I'm really into from Cuba is called Man Manuel Galbon. Um, and he was in a band called Los Zafiros, and, um, or Zaf Los Zafiros. And, uh, and it was really twangy, and he played some, probably a Russian guitar or some, it, it was a very strange, you know, it was obviously a communist country then, so potentially it could have been a Russian guitar, I don't know what it was, but it was a very strange looking guitar, I've never seen it before. And um, anyway, so this is kind of what I was wanting to. Something that sounded like it was from the 50s rather than the 60s, you know, like a 60s Les Paul or Strat. I wanted something much more sort of twangy and 50s style so that I could use for that style of music. And so this is what I got. And really for me, I don't, I know this may be upset a few people, but I don't like reproduction pickups. I mean, okay, so if I'm going to put PAFs in a Les Paul, then I'm going to have to go to for, for repros because you know PAFs are just too expensive nowadays. So, but in the case of these ones, these um, these kind of Guild and Gretsch Dynasonics. When I say Guild and Gretsch, these Dynasonics were in many Guilds and many models of Gretsches in the in the in the fifties. And um, I just love the sound of these. You know, in fact, these was these sound so good that Les Paul actually had one of these in his first. You know, and he sees his um, Black Beauty and he put a, a cover over it so it looked like a P90, but it wasn't. It was one of these. 
and the P90 was designed as a copy of one of these you know that's how good these pickups are so really that was really my thinking was to base a guitar around these pickups so I got this body from MJT and um, I asked him to to not relic it you know because re MJ2, you, MJT you go on the the eBay and you can you know pick some great bodies but you can actually email the guy which is what I did and um, and he will make you a body um, with any colour you want, but he always relics them, or at least sort of does, you know, does some something to them to make them look old. But I said, don't do that. Can you make it look new, and put an extra layer of lacquer on, you know? And he didn't want to do that. He said, it's not what we do, you know. We do kind of aged, aged bodies and necks. And I said, no, no, I, I want this not aged at all. I just want it just normal. And as soon as I got it, it was it, <clears throat> it was um, winter time in England, really cold. <clears throat> and I got it out of the case and I could hear the pin cracking. So I don't know if you can see this. The whole thing is just cracked. You know. So anyway, so that's another feature of the guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. So another thing is this. I had, originally I had um, a, mo a, a modern Bixby. Okay. And then I got a Mastery Bridge, which I still have on there. And then the uh, the other feature are these um, Fender um, Pearl Elite tuners and a, um, a rosewood Brazilian rosewood fingerboard and a uh, flame maple neck. <coughs> so basically, um, the guitar and these um, came from a lap steel. So the the idea was that everything was white, all the hardware, you know, the, the scratch plate. The pickups, these knobs, everything's white on it, including, you know, these pearl buttons, of course. And silver hardware, that was kind of what I was going for, again, because of the... Normally these are the famous sort of Steve Ray Vaughan ones, but you can get them in silver, they're actually more rare. And um, the Fender logo um, backplate there. And yeah, so um, obviously the strings are coming through here. But what happened was, originally I had a more modern Bixby. Now, I don't know if this is just on this guitar, but the, the modern Bixby, I don't know, it just didn't feel quite right. You know, this, the kind of travel and, and the, just the, it just didn't feel right. It just didn't sound right. So I sold that one. And then the guitar was kind of, for, for, for about a year, the guitar was without a Bixby. And I was just using it um as a normal with a stock tail so these these were i still have the mastery bridge so these mastery bridges are just absolutely amazing because when you rock this that that bridge kind of goes with it travels with it so you can potentially you're still in tune so that's, that's a really good thing about nice unique feature about the guitar with that mastery bridge and anyway so i didn't have the bixby for a year it was just more of a, like a just a normal telly and the the strings were um, were coming out of here, and basically, I just didn't like it. I just didn't play it. I never picked it up. So for one year, I just did not play this guitar. It just didn't speak to me, you know. I did a gig actually. I did a gig and um, with it, and it, and it did sound really good. It sounded played really great, and but that the whole re the reason I designed this guitar was f for the big speed and the and the pickups. And when you have a big speed on this, it just it just comes to life, you know. And it's a very light guitar, so with the Bixby, it's still relatively light. It's a little bit heavier with the Bixby, but it's not, you know, it's, it's not a heavy guitar. So that, that's another really cool thing about it. Um, but this, originally, I didn't have enough money at the time to, to buy the original Bixby. Because obviously, I was, the pickups cost a bomb and, and all the parts, the tuners, everything. It's quite expensive guitar to put together. But eventually, I, I, I got a, an original got a good deal on an original 60s Bixby so now it really is where it needs to be with the original Bixby and the original pickup so I you know if you're gonna if you're guys if you're building a guitar with you know Bixby and these kind of pickups try to get the originals because there is definitely I'm not just saying this when I do put a guitar together a parts cast a guitar and I guess this is the moral of this video is if you can possibly get the original pickups you know, if they're available, obviously don't go and butcher these nice guilds and gretches, but if they're available, just pick them up, you know, um, 
just do whatever you can. And also the original Big Speeds are really cool. And I will see a lot of original Big Speeds on um, on eBay and stuff. So they are out there and they're not too too expensive. But uh, that really does make a difference. I think the original Big Speed, original pickups, and then, you know, the rest of, you know, Brazilian rosewood um, uh, and this beautiful neck. That, you know, that's, you know, that's part of the sound, but really the sound, the magic is coming from these pickups and this Bigsby, and I think that's what really makes this guitar really incredible. And one of, really one of my favorite pieces, you know, really, and this is, like I said, this is a guitar I, I travel with, you know, I, I put it apart. And I don't care about putting it apart because, you know, it's a part of caster, you know, I built, you know, I got the neck and I got the body, stuck it together, took it to um, a luthier who, who drilled out the holes and, um, I think he, because the, the screws of this are quite long, we had to shorten those screws, otherwise it would have come through the other side of the guitar because it's, you know, it's a Telecaster thickness. So, so yeah, um, that's it. And that's my story of my blue Telecaster. Thanks for checking out the video.